Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to start a series on Mikhail Tal, one of the greatest chess players of all times and one of the most famous uh, world champions. Now Tal was famous for his combinations, for his tactical genius, for his aggressive, often unsound play and uh, most importantly for his beautiful games because attacking unsound chess, sometimes unsound chess, often produces very beautiful games. Uh, today we are going to have a look at his first recorded game from his first recorded tournament played in his hometown of Riga in 1949. Now Mihail Tal was born, born in 1936 so he was 12 or 13 during this game and there's an interview with him in the Chess Life magazine from 1967 where he says he learned chess at the age of six so definitely not his first game but his first recorded game. Now, a brief intro about him. Uh, he was known as the magician from Riga, which is very much a good nickname for him. Uh, he won his first Latvian championship in 1953, uh, so he was young, and earned the title of Soviet master in 1954. When he was 20, in 1957, he became the youngest ever Soviet champion. Now, that was a huge thing. In 1957, if a 20-year-old old, old wins the Soviet championship, then, I, I mean, Botvinnik was there. There were a lot of strong players, and Tal was sort of this young uh, kid who played aggressive chess and defeated everybody. And I don't think everybody liked him. Okay, uh, in 1960, uh, he uh, was second in the Soviet Championship. He won the Portoroge Interzonal and the candidates in Bled Zagreb Belgrade, which Bobby Fischer also played in, in 59. Uh, he qualified to play for the World Championship and he played a match with Mikhail Botvinnik and that was a huge clash of styles. So Botvinnik was this sound calculating machine computer guy who always plays correct moves, plays precise chess and Tal just comes along, sacrifices a knight and a pawn and then checkmates you and, and Tal won. Uh, so... That was a huge upset in the Soviet chess world. And this record as being the, the youngest world champion was broken by Garry Kasparov in 1985. So Tal was a huge talent. Uh, the following year, he rematched with, uh, with Botvinnik and lost, unfortunately. But uh, the reason for that was probably his poor condition and the fact that he smoked, he drank. Uh, I don't think he was in good physical shape. He was basically always sick, even though his family were all doctors or pharmacists. His father was a doctor, I think his brother was a pharmacist or a doctor. And Tal was completely different. He just, he looked like he was 150 when he was 50. So, unfortunately for him, he didn't stay in shape. Okay, and he died in 1992, which is quite late for a guy who smoked 200 cigarettes per day. Okay, so his first game is absolutely brilliant. Uh, he played pawn to e4. His opponent was Strelkov. I have no idea who that is. That's some Latvian guy who played in Riga in 1949. No recorded games apart from this one. Uh, there's one more with, with Tal the following year, actually. Okay, he played the French and after d4, d5 we have the, uh, we have the Tarash by Mihal Tal, which is my favorite uh, weapon against the French. Unfortunately for, for Mihail Tal, uh, his opponent plays what all Tarash French players hate most, and that's knight d7 or knight f6, transposing into the Rubinstein French. Okay, uh, but still, I mean, the position should be equal. White doesn't really have a big advantage here, but has a bit more pleasant position because the d4 pawn is better than the e6 pawn. Okay, knight to f3, knight g to f6, and now there are a couple of options. Um, probably the most popular is knight f6, followed by knight f6 and bishop d3, and black should break the center with c5. I've played this a million times, and dc5, and bishop c5, and castles. So th this is a perfectly equal position where white has a 3-2 uh, uh, majority on the queen side. That should be a slight edge. Other than that, his advantage is the fact that this bishop is slightly worse than the bishop on d3, but that's going to change quickly and there shouldn't be uh, problems with the development of the bishop. Okay, other than knight takes f6, you could also play bishop d3. This, I think, is the second most popular, declining a trade or uh, provoking black into trading. Black should play c5 and white should castle and probably knight e4. 
bishop e4, knight f6, and bishop g5. This is one of the more popular lines. And also, white could simply play bishop g5, pinning the knight. But uh, Mihail Tal played what's probably the most aggressive move, simply declining any trades. He played knight to g3. Okay, uh, pawn to c5. Now you could take, but that sort of releases the tension. He played c3, which I think is better. Uh, because you are playing the Tarash against the French, so your knight is on f3, you don't really need the c3 square for the knight, therefore you can afford to play the move c3. So in the Tarash French you will often you will often have this pawn chain for white. Cd4 traded off, and now I would have preferred to take with the pawn, uh, since this knight would have a nice outpost on e5, but Mihal Tal uh, took with the knight, which is slightly less aggressive, probably because he was young and he wasn't familiar with the Soviet positional school of chess yet. Uh, a6, uh, bishop to d3, developing his last piece. And, and this is the issue with the Rubinstein French. Black is equal here. And white doesn't have an advantage. His only theoretical advantage is the pawn majority on the queen side. It would be much better if you could move this knight to f3. So that then probably white would be slightly better. And here, uh, black played the move knight c5, uh, which sort of puts the knight offside. It was much better to play knight e5 with the same idea of chasing the bishop away, or it was much better to simply start developing your pieces and to play bishop e7 and castle. But knight c5, okay, the bishop moves, uh, bishop to c2, and here black blunders. Now, what black should do here, he basically has three options. So if you want to sort of keep the position equal or slightly better uh, then you have to react now so you can either play g6 bishop g7 try to castle you can play bishop e7 and castles or you can play what's most aggressive and most ambitious simply b5 bishop b7 which i think is the best option because white will castle kingside and you are going to have some targets here in the game though black just threw the game away with e5 and th this is a horrible move uh, if you want, you can pause the video and, and punish the move e5. Okay, so Tal of course played queen to e2, simply developing his queen, pinning the pawn, and there is no easy way to defend. You can play knight d7, or you can play bishop d6, you can play queen e7. In the game, bishop d6 was played, and now simply knight d2 f5, uh, saving the knight even though it was still the pawn was still pinned, but simply attacking the bishop. If you move the bishop back here, then queen takes pawn. If you move the bishop somewhere away, then, then knight takes pawn, and no way to save the position now. Uh, black castles, and now what you have to do with white uh, is you have to pin the bishop to the queen, ideally. So you want to play the move rook d1 or you want to play castles queen side, you want to exploit the pin on the queen uh, and you shouldn't hurry with, with castle and king side or anything, just try to play as aggressive as possible. But there are two good moves here. If you want you can pause the video trying to find the two good attacking moves, moves for white. Tai played the second best. Uh, the best move was bishop to h6 and this is extremely aggressive there are no good defenses to this move so let's look at gh6 first that's the most obvious after gh6 you play rook d1 you could also castle queenside but this is sli slightly sounder and now now it's just game over you could defend the bishop with knight e8 uh, but then you lose the queen best case you lose the queen so for example rook takes d6 knight takes d6 that's why we wanted to play knight e8 but now queen g4 and you have to defend with queen g5 and the problem is that your queen is hanging after knight h6 check king h8 and queen takes queen and that's game over uh, another option after gh6 rook d1 would be bishop e6 simply giving up uh, the bishop but trying to save yourself somehow so after rook takes d6 something like knight to d7 and castles and white is of course winning and and the, the game should be over again uh, and after g takes h6 uh, all other options are are just equally bad okay so after bishop h6 you don't really want to take i'll show you an engine move which i don't really understand but i analyze the game with an engine as well which i normally don't do the engine plays e4 here and it just gives up a pawn to try to stop the white pieces from coming in. Uh, and the reaction is simply castles queenside. And after bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, queen to d7, attacking the knight. So what did black achieve here? 
I don't know, his position is probably slightly liberated. Here you just, I assume you just take the bishop. I don't see a problem with that. And again, I believe that uh, white should simply be winning. But that's an engine line, which the engine thinks is the best for black, even though still losing. Okay, but let's look at the normal move. After bishop h6, I think most humans would simply play knight e8, trying to defend. And I'll show you another defense. So after knight e8, what white should do is simply castle queenside. And after bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, g takes h6, you could now either play queen g4 check or knight takes d6. I think knight takes d6 is best. Uh, so knight takes d6, knight takes d6, and now queen takes e5. Queen to g5 check forces a queen trade. And this position should be winning for white, uh, even though... For, of course you take the knight, even though it's only a pawn up, because your bishop is better, black's king is less safe, your rook is more active, and it's a perfectly good position. Okay, another option after bishop h6 would have been to simply play g6, but now knight takes d6, and after queen takes d6, you can simply take bishop takes f8. So bishop takes uh, bishop to h6 was much better than what Tile played, but what Tile played was still was still winning. He played bishop g5 with the same idea of rook d1 or castle's queenside. Uh, and black played bishop to c7, trying to unpin uh, while white still didn't have the time to, to bring the rook into play. Okay, rook to d1 anyway. Uh, I'll just show you a good al alternative to bishop c7, which is much worse than, than what he should have played. He should have taken on f5, just getting rid of one of the knights. And after knight um, takes f5, bishop to e7 to prevent this from happening. You want your bishop to be defending f6. And after rook d1... Queen c7, castles king side. Maybe black would live to see another day. Maybe, but not likely. In any case, white is still dominating the entire position. This is such a tight position. Look at this. But, okay, uh, bishop to c7 played. And now rook to d1. Knight c to d7. And knight h5. And look at this. I mean, if you saw this position and you didn't know who played it, one of your first guesses would have to be Mihail Tal. Uh, did I? Yeah. Okay. So so now nothing works. Uh, once again, the engine wants to play e4 here. Let's not analyze that. If if e4, then knight takes g7 simply, and uh, I think bishop e5 is the move, and then bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6, and queen takes e4, and you're gonna get mated. Okay, but there is no good defense uh, in the game. Bishop b6 was played. Uh, g6 was probably the the easiest defense for a human to try. This also fails miserably. The problem is that your knight is pinned to the queen, your your other knight is pinned to the queen, and you're about to get mated like this. So knight h6 check, king h8, bishop f6. So now knight h6 check, king to h8, knight takes f6. And in this position, if you play knight takes f6, then I simply take here, and you cannot capture back because bishop, f, uh, bishop f6 is mate. So after... So after knight takes f6, queen e7 is probably the best move. But now simply queen to c4, uh, a very strong move. Uh, after queen to c4, threatening to take the bishop, probably knight takes f6 is best. And now you don't you don't recapture, you play queen to c5, and this is a beautiful variation. So if queen takes queen, bishop f6 is mate. If the queen moves, queen takes rook. Uh, queen takes queen, bishop f6 is again at least winning the queen because the queen would have to cover on g7. So g6 doesn't work. So his opponent played bishop b6, which is understandable. And Tai simply took bishop takes f6 and, and uh, Strelkov resigned. So what are the options? Um, well, okay, let's, let's see. If you don't do anything, that, that's the first option. If you don't do anything, if you play something like rook to b8, then I play knight h6 check. And you play uh, king h8, and they play bishop g7. So it's actually a threat of a mate in two. Okay. So after bishop f6, uh, if you uh, play queen takes f6, then I just take your queen, and after knight f6, I can do anything. So that, that doesn't work. And after bishop f6, if uh, g takes f6, then queen g4 check is a mate in two again. So a strong threat. Okay. And, and that's it, he resigned. And I should just mention that after bishop b6, uh, he could have also taken on g7. And now, again, if you don't do anything, if you play something like rook b2, then knight takes f6. Excuse me, king g7 and queen h5. 
uh, would be mate fairly quickly. Mate in five. So knight takes f6, queen h6 check, king to g8, bishop f6, and now I think the best move is queen d1 or queen d2. So knight takes g7 was also good. But uh, look at the position after bishop g5, bishop c7, okay, rook d1, knight c to d7, and knight h5. Only one piece not in play, only the rook on h1 is not taking part every other piece is absolutely dominating black's position and i'm very happy to be covering this game as styles first every thursday i'm going to cover one game by the magician from riga this one was only 16 moves but it was it was great 16 moves thank you very much for watching uh, see you later hope you like the video let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess bye bye